Now we turn to Europe and we want to look at some of the data that's come out since the last time we spoke about it. And here you can see that service PMI, as we as we were talking, came the expectation was for 48.2, came in slightly better at 48.6. Eurozone composite was expected at 47.1, came in at 47.3. So right in line, pretty close to estimates, again, still contracting, PPI continuing to move higher as, as investor sentiment remains under pressure, and retail sales coming in fairly in line, you know, slightly worse on a year over year, you know, slightly positive for a month over month. But the bigger issue is going to be where are we going to go from this point forward as wages weaken and other pressure arises within the underlying economic growth. So when we look at Germany, factory orders, a good leading indicator was expected to be down 0.5, came in down 4%. Uh, year over year expected to be down 7.2%, came in down 10.8%. Service PMI was expected to be 44.9. Uh, it came in at 46.5. Uh, composite was expected to be at 44.1, came in at 45.1. So again, slightly better, but still contracting with more pressure coming when we look at the leading indicators like new export orders, new orders. And that's a, a problem that we see, which is why the German construction PMI coming in at 43.8, again, continues to show that that just contraction is not as bad as before because the previous was 41.8. But we're not seeing a huge increase. It's not back to 50. It's just contracting at a slightly slower pace, but still moving in the wrong direction. So then when we, when we take that to, uh, to France, France saw a uh, contraction on the industrial production side, expected to be down 1%, came in only down 0.8. Manufacturing production was expected to be down 1.3, came in down 0.4. So service PMI was expected to be at 51.3, came in at 51.7. So the composite overall was 50.2. So just kind of hanging in at this kind of normal level, if you will, but it's not really expanding. It's not really contracting. It's just kind of holding steady. But the current account balance came in negative. But wages slowed more than expected. So I, I, it slowed more than expected where it was expected to be up 1.2%, came in up 09 So this is when we start looking forward in terms of where is services going to be, where is spending going to be. Well, as wages compress as inflation continues to run rampant in Europe, that's going to be a bigger issue when we think about economic growth. But France should have enough data to, to support growth in Q4. So really, Germany is the bigger issue. Germany and Italy are the bigger issues in Q4, with France being more of a 2023 story. So Italy uh, global service PMI was expected to, uh, Italy service PMI was expected to be at 48.5, came in at 46.4. Composite was expected to be at 47.4, came in at 45.8. So again, that accelerating downside where Italy getting that much worse with Germany kind of bouncing along at a fairly uh, uh, tight cap. Industrial production also slowing. All of that is, again, showing those pressure points. Then when we look at the 10-year versus the two-year German Bund, the uh, inverted yield curve, uh, Germany Bund yield curve has inverted between the 10-year and the two-year for the first time since the depths of 2008 financial crisis. And again, it's just the, the underlying market is showing you the fear and the pain that is expected and, and the Germany is going to be front and center when we consider what is happening on the European front. Europe's growing list of problems. Business cycle indicator is now negative. Credit flows to households now neg uh, now contracting at a, at a much faster clip. Net change lending standards are tightening faster than expected. And if you look back, it's the fastest since 2010. Euro area exports outside the euro area, global manufacturing, again, all slowing. So when you look at this, you're seeing that this accelerated downside in terms of household spending. You know, wages already starting to roll over. Business cycle indicator is now negative. Exports moving down, and lending standards are getting tighter, which is making it harder for people and companies to access capital, which will slow down capex, slow down investment, and that's what we're going to continue to see on a slowing economic front. 
And when you look at the net change in lending standards, uh, it's deteriorating further. And then the net change in loan demand is also diminishing because not only are, are standards going up, well, then consumers are like, well, I don't want that. So now the consumer is not borrowing as much. The firm, uh, you know, firms and corporations are still fairly flat because they need to access capital, but the consumer is essentially walking away saying, I can't afford it. I don't need it at this point in time. Euro area balance of payments, current account. When you look at uh, at August uh, 2022, down 26 billion. Uh, you can see just in terms of where we are, it's the lowest we've been since 2008. Consumption in Europe very much at risk. When you look at retail sales and and what, so everything we've talked about has been slowing demand on the exporting side, on the trade side, but. Wages are falling, services are falling, manufacturing things are falling internally. Again, retail sales, which is something that has actually held up pretty well within the European Union, is now set to to start to accelerate to the downside. And that's really going to take the wheels off when you look at the underlying market in Europe and how we expect to see that slowdown increase. The French trade balance just gives you an idea of just how low it has gotten versus where it was in 2001, and the pressure continues to grow because they need the local consumer, but local consumption continues to diminish. Germany factory orders were expected to be down 5.5%. They were down 4%. German factory orders in general, you get an idea of where and how that slowdown has accelerated with industrial production and manufacturing output continues to move down in the negative way, uh, which is pushing, again, the concern with Germany, the concern with Europe, with pushing the bond yields higher. And that's why it's it's just the, the pressure in Europe is growing. And it's already grown. It's just a matter of when does the market recognize it and what does that fallout look like Given the fact that now you you saw FTX, you, you're starting to see a, a cascading problem, and just the amount of fraud that was out there, the amount of issues that are out there. You know, what is that going to do to consumer confidence? What is that going to do con to consumer discretionary spending? How many people were invested in some of these things? Wages are coming down. You know, your your exports are slowing. This is where we continue to see problems on the European front, which is why we think that 2023 is going to be a, a ugly, if not sloppy year for the European Union. So there wasn't as much to cover here. We did a lot of it in, Q in uh, segment one as well. The next segment, we're going to go deeper into Asia and what is happening on the Chinese front uh, specifically.